the day Imam al Hussein was born, the Prophet receives the news that the Imam, that his grandson, his second beloved grandson is born. He goes to the house. He says to Umm Salama, he says to her, I want to see my grandson. Umm Salama says, we want to wash him. The Prophet said, you want to wash him? You want to wash Hussein, my Hussein? Allah ghasal al Hussein. God Himself washed Imam al Hussein. He bathed Imam al Hussein. He's clean. He's pure. He doesn't need to be bathed. You go and you bring me my grandson Hussein. She goes and brings back Imam al Hussein, hands him to the Prophet. He's wrapped with a yellow cloth. The Imam said, the, the Prophet says, This is wrong. Don't ever wrap a baby with a yellow cloth. He takes it off. And then the Prophet begins to weep. Imagine a beautiful day on which everyone's received the great news of the Prophet's second grandson. Everyone's in a festive mood, everyone's rejoicing, everyone's happy. You know, not the least of which Fatima to Zahra, they're all waiting to see how the Prophet is going to greet his new grandson. And suddenly the Prophet looks into his face and begins to cry. He cries and cries and cries and weeps without giving any, any explanation. So Imam Ali and Fatima to Zahra naturally begin to cry. Not because of the reason, not because they know what's happening, but because they look at the Prophet crying in such a way, they begin to cry. Umm Salama cries, everyone cries. Ya Rasulullah, what's happening? The Prophet says, this grandson of mine will be slaughtered. You see his little neck? You see these beautiful lips? These lips, they're the same ones that Yazid will hold a stick, immerse it into alcohol, and then beat Imam al Hussein onto his face and onto these very lips. They will slaughter this grandson of mine, Fatima. Oh, daughter Fatima, do you know that they'll kill your son who was just born today? Fatima to Zahra weeps and cries and says, Ya Rasulullah, who's going to kill my son? The Prophet, listen to this. The Prophet doesn't say a bunch of strangers, non-Muslims will come and kill your, your son Hussein. He says, your, my ummah will come and kill my grandson. The people that claim allegiance to me, O oh Fatima, will kill your son Fatima. They all cry. Alam al-Amini says, history also tells us that, he, that the Prophet, this is one session that the Prophet held as a majlis for his grandson, Imam al-Hussein. He came back three days later and he did the same thing all over again. He held another majlis for Imam al-Hussein and he cried and he made everybody cry. He came back on the seventh day after his birth and he also held another majlis for Imam al-Hussein. He cried and made everybody cry. Look at the seerah of Ahlul Bayt, the Imams. Look at what they did. Imam al Sadiq sees a man. His name is Ja'far ibn Affan. He says to him, Oh Ja'far, I've heard that you recite poetry. Do you recite poetry? He said, Yes, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I do. He said, Why don't you come and sit here right next to me and recite some poetry, eulogizing my grandfather, Al Hussein ibn Ali? Ja'far ibn Affan comes and sits, sits next to the Imam. He begins to eulogize Imam al Hussein in a very formal way. You know, he does so, quote unquote, in a civilized fashion. He begins to talk about his virtues and talk about his greatness and nearness to the Prophet. Suddenly, Imam al Sadiq interrupts him and says, Ya Ja'far, could you please eulogize my grandfather the way you do so in your own town, in your own city, in Riqqa? in Syria, in modern day Syria. In Raqqa they used to eulogize the dead ones by beating themselves on the head, by crying and weeping. Let's not act civilized here. When you listen to such a tragedy, Imam al Hussein, let me tell you something brothers and sisters, Imam al Hussein is not to be compared to revolutionaries, but to prophets. The city of Karbala isn't to be compared to other towns and cities, but to celestial spots in the heaven. And the catastrophe of the day of Ashura is not to be compared to human tragedies, but to the greatest tragedies humanity has ever witnessed. So when we sit down and we hear these tragedies, and we hear these catastrophes, let's not refrain from expressing our emotions. Let's not do that. Just let it all out. 
Because Imam al-Sadiq says in another narration to one of his companions, he says, أَتَجْلِسُونَ وَتُحَدِّثُونَ Tuhaddith means is to sit down and to convey the messages of Ahlul Bayt to other people. In other words, get someone to sit on a pulpit and to address the crowds by mentioning the virtues of Ahlul Bayt, by talking about their greatness and by mentioning their tragedies as well. He says, yes, we do that, Ya Ibn Rasulullah. The Imam said to him, أَحْسَنْتُمْ May Allah bless those who uphold our cause, those who mention us, those who talk about our tragedies. So for the mere fact that you are here tonight makes you subject to the prayer of Imam al-Sadiq The fact that you're here tonight, the fact that you take part in these majalis, makes those prayers. And whose prayers are we talking about? The prayers of Imam al-Sadiq. The Imam says in one narration, عَوَّدَنَا رَبُّنَا Our Lord, God Almighty, has taught us that when, whenever we ask Him for something, He gives us what we want. When Imam al-Sadiq prays for you and me, you be certain that you will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another tradition mentions Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam saying to that man, Shabib ibn Yasar, it's a famous tradition. The Imam says to him, Ya Shabib, he enters upon the Imam. The Imam is sitting down and the Imam is crying. So he comes in, the Imam says to him, Oh Shabib, are you fasting today? He said, No, Ya ibn Rasulullah, why should I be fasting? He said, This is the first day of the month of Muharram. I want you to fast on this day. And I want you to pray to God for mercy and compassion. O oh, Shabib, do you know that this was the month which was revered and held as sacred by the pagan Arabs? They revered this month, the month of Muharram so much that they would not fight each other even though their entire business was to fight each other, was to shed each other's blood, was to kill each other. They were nothing but pathetic pirates. And yet on the month of Muharram, they would not fight. They were refrained from wars because, this, because they held this month as a sacred month. They called it Muharram. As in, it is prohibited to fight during this month. But O oh Shabib, do you know that the followers of our Prophet, those who claim allegiance to our Prophet, the people of this Ummah, they did not revere neither this month nor the relationship to the Prophet when they shed the blood of Imam al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. Do you know what they did, O oh Shabib? Should I sit down here and tell you the stories, O oh Shabib? And then the Imam begins to cry and the companions begin to cry. And then the Imam asks someone, listen to this. He asks someone to go outside. According to another tradition, Imam al-Sadiq was the one who did that. He gets someone to recite a, uh, what we refer to as Azadari or Majlis for Imam Hussein. They begin to cry. Then the Imam says to him, by God you cried, abkait. بَكَيْتَ وَأَبْكَيْتَ You cried and you made us cry. وَوَاللَّهِ مَنْ بَكَى مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَكْبَرْ مِنْ مَنْ بَكَى مِنَ الْإِنسِ By God, the angels that you made today, the angels that cried after hearing what you just said, are much greater in number than the human beings that cry. The whole house engulfs in sorrow and mourning and, and weeping to the point where Imam al-Sadiq being confined and being watched and being monitored by the authorities, he asks one of his companions to go outside and stand at the door. He said to him, he gave him specific instructions. He said to him, if anybody walks by and notices everyone crying down here, make sure they don't know what we're doing. And just tell them this, tell them we're crying because because a young infant boy was killed. We lost a young six-month-old. 